Today on Houston Life, how you can stick to your New Year's resolutions with health conscious wines. We'll share an organically grown vegan option you'll love. Plus, what women need to know to stay on top of their health, the essential screening saving lives. Then meet the local chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi. Learn how they are celebrating its founding with a special day of caring. And it's a big day for the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo as they get ready to reveal the rest of the 2022 calendar. Yes, Lauren Kelly is getting some behind the scene action ahead of the big announcement coming today. We'll check in with her live in just a moment. All that more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. It is hump day. Welcome to Houston Life, everyone. It is Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. We made it to Wednesday in this first week of January. How's all your things going? Dry January, eating clean. How's that going for you? Well, I never said that I was doing dry January, did I? Yes, you said ish. Well, I mean it's ish. The fifth. Listen, last night was a little wet. Okay. <laughs> what happened well, on a Tuesday? Well, so we were going downtown to Hobby Center right. to see Hades Town, which we have been dying to see. So we thought, you know, let's make it a date night. Let's go to dinner. So we went down to Sapporo, which is right by Market Square. This Love is it. one of our favorite mm -hmm. sushi spots. It's a little hole in the wall. Say hi to Susan and V and Wendy, our buddies who work there uh, when you go in. Great sushi, great time. So while we're sitting there, I get an email that the show had been canceled. Last night's performance of Hades Town was canceled, which is a bummer. So we'll go yes. another time. Um, so what did we do? We went Continued around the corner the fun. to La Fisheria. If you haven't been there in a minute, also right by uh, Market Square Park. Killer skinny margaritas. Tony behind the bar uh, will hook you up. He makes a great one. So we should do a little date night down there sometime. Would have loved to text last night. So, well, we decided to walk home and on the way um, we were passing by Secret Garden and I thought, you know what, we love this spot because we used to live in Eris uh, while we were building our house. So we stopped by and uh, Meadow behind the bar, you can say hi to him when you go in. They've got a great happy hour and, you know, show our downtown businesses some love because it's a quiet time for them in January. Yes. You're not doing dry January. Go on down, do a happy hour, have a dinner, hang out. So it was a progressive uh, wine tasting. Yes. No food. No, Did we you had eat? Some food. We had some food. Oh, we had sushi. sushi. That's right. Yeah, and we had some guac okay. at La Fisheria. Hey, so enough about that. How about CES? You know, the Consumer Electronics Show kicks off in Vegas today. It's a big deal. Today. Big it's deal. A big deal. I used to go to this show. And you know, with COVID, it sort of messed everything up because they had to do it virtual last year. Right. Even this year is mostly remote, right? So we love CES because not only do they unveil like the latest cameras, smartphones. We talked about like the BlackBerry went away yesterday, right? So I know, I know. Rest, rest in peace, in BlackBerry, peace. right? So in addition, though, to the latest latest TVs and computers and all that, they always showcase these new and unusual technologies. So here's a little shot of a CNN business article. And as we keep going down, they have things like this smart bird feeder. Actually, check out these smart bulbs. So you know, like Wi-Fi enabled bulbs, right? Here's the thing about this bulb. So this is actually a smart bulb that can monitor your heart rate, other vital signs, your sleep patterns. It uses radar to sense, you can even use multiple light bulbs in your house and it create like a mesh network and it will sense human behavioral patterns. So it can even sense, the company says, if someone falls down and it can wow. call for help for you. So some pretty incredible things. It, you know me, I fall all the time. So this would be like, this would be very bad for me. It would be very helpful. <laughs> hey, how about this? There's a brand new app being unveiled at CES. It's called Pet Now. Do you know your dog's nose is like a human fingerprint, no two are alike. So if your dog gets lost, you can use the Pet Now app to actually scan the nose. The nose of a dog instead of microchipping a dog. Isn't, oh my word. Isn't that incredible? It's a game changer, right? There's also a camera enabled bird feeder so you can get close up like HD video of the birds who come to your house to feed. It'll save a photo album of those birds. And it even uses artificial intelligence to identify what type of bird it is. This, I hope my neighbor Teresa is watching because this would be perfect for her. I think this is something your mom needs. I think, I mean, we're going to get one for sure. Yeah. 
Available in June, by the way. There's even a bathtub How that, much you, is that you can use a voice command to have your bathtub fill up, and depending on the user, you can preset the temperature. You're not impressed, are you? The temperature and the and the fill line of the tub. Isn't no, that cool? No, I am. But here's the thing. Walk up, turn it on. Who has time for that? I know. It's so brutal, huh? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Go see us. Click no, around cool online because there's some really cool products and this year. And just the people behind this, right? Like what they're thinking of, what has not even been uh, unveiled yet, you know, and what people are working on. The bird feeder, the, no the dog nose thing. Who knew? You know, my mom loves to quote, there was a guy who was a head, the head of the U.S. Patent Office. Like a hundred years ago, this guy said, everything that can be invented has been invented. Oh, he has rolled over a few that times, guy. hasn't he? Yeah. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Here's the other thing. So you're talking about Consumer Electronics Show. I'm going to talk to you about some real life things. TikTok, of course. Um, you know, we can find out all kinds of things on TikTok. What's yeah. popular, you know, the memes and Recipes. cooking and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Now it's going to tell you whether or not you should have short or long hair. How does it know? Well, it's a thing. Okay, so uh, here's the thing. It, it's a whole video, and it explains. People are showing you. It doesn't, like, you know, morph your face into anything. So here's some pencils for you. There's another one here. I can't reach it. Okay. You, you got it? You need two pencils. Okay. And it's basically, um, I'm not going to do the math, but you take the first pencil and kind of put it under your chin here, and you put it the second pencil, this is why I'll never be a weather person, uh, just under your ear, and... If the distance between the space here, between your earlobe and your chin... Do you actually touch your earlobe or put it in like the little... I would put it like, you know... In the crevice? Not the crevice, if but you like have to the bottom of the lobe, earlobe. which is not great with long earrings. Okay. Um, the shorter the distance, the better chance you are to have longer... You should have shorter hair. I don't get it. If you have a lot of space in between your chin and your neck, basically, is what they're saying, then you could, then you, long hair is going to look good You should have longer you. hair. So should I have longer hair? Um, let me see. What's my demo? What's my, um, this my is measurements? Very, this is very helpful. I mean, I don't have the actual why measurements. Why not use a tape measure? Didn't you have short hair at one time oh, in your life? Oh, girl. That's all I had. This is the longest my hair has ever been. You've had a... This is my first headshot here at KPRC. Yeah. I'm... You, you're mortified? I'm, no, I'm just speechless. Why? I, I mean, you look That's gorgeous. Young Courtney. Young Courtney, wow. With really short hair. I had just started growing it out. And when I met Orlando, I had like a pixie cut. I love that look on you. I've always had short hair. You had a pixie cut when you met Orlando? Mm -hmm. Do you have a photo of that one too? Somewhere. I'll dig it up. I'll dig it up and hopefully bring it in tomorrow. I do have several, but I, I mean, you know, who knows where those are. When you were in high school, though, didn't you sort of have like the... Oh, yeah, my hair was really long, but it was out. <laughs> They had extra wide doorways in her house they, just so the hair could get listen, through. Listen, my senior picture, the sides of my hair were actually cut out because it didn't fit in the photo frame for the photographer. That is so awesome. It was well, a lot. But wait, back to hair, though. I mean, shouldn't you just have... Shouldn't you just do what you want to do? So here's the thing. I just opened a can of worms because thankfully on this day that I'm talking about long hair, short hair, my hair is pulled back. So the long hair haters aren't going to email me today. But yes, I mean, where would you like? Yeah. You know? Can I tell you a, a story about my hair and my mom? So there was a time when I had hair that was like down to All here. one length, right? When my oldest sister, Heather, got married. And my hair is kind of like wavy curly. But that was a look. It was a look, but it was a pain. It was such a pain so to try hard to, to take do. care of. And every time I see my mom, I'm not exaggerating, every time she asks me if I will grow my hair back out. And even this, like when I do the short buzz cut. I love your short hair. I like it short too because it's just easy, right? Blow and go. So when it's a little bit longer on this, my mom's like, grow it in. It, it needs to be. And I try to explain, mom, I'm a low maintenance guy. Yeah. Having a lot of hair is, is a work. Yeah, it, it's a work. It's a work. It is a work. <laughs> it is a work day. Well, listen, we're only a few days into 2022, but I feel like over the holidays, we didn't really properly say goodbye to 2021. So our producers decided we should play a little game, have a little okay. quiz okay. to test our pop culture knowledge of 2021. How does that sound? Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go first. Um, if, I can, if I can just find that card. Okay, <laughs> here's the first question. Which pop star was freed of her conservatorship this year? Britney Spears. Oh, you didn't even need the multiple choice. You are correct. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And the Free Britney movement I, I, sort of fueled, fueled that process. Absolutely. Great movie, by the way. 
you have the documentary if you haven't seen it. Okay, my question to you is which famous person has Pete Davidson not dated? You need to know who he is. And if you don't, then Pete Davidson from SNL. He's yeah. dating Courtney Kardashian or Kim Kardashian right now. Yeah, who yeah. is he not dated? Am I to read? Okay, uh, Kim Kardashian, Kate Beckinsale, Miley Cyrus, or Ariana Grande? Uh, I would guess he has not dated Kate Beckinsale. Wrong. Miley Cyrus? Yes. Miley They're friends. Cyrus. Miley, he and Miley are oh. friends. Okay. But he did date all, yes, Kate Beck. Okay, Beckinsale. that's, that's mm -hmm. a list of very nice people right there. I support that, Pete. Okay, how about this? Uh, this artist took home the Grammy for Album of the Year. Was it A, Harry Styles, B, Taylor Swift, C, Dua Lipa, or Dua Beep, as Wendy Williams says, D, Coldplay? Harry Styles. No. No? Taylor Swift? Yep. Yeah. It was T-Swizz. Even though it was released in 2020, she won for her album, Folklore. I, you know, I was late to the game becoming a Taylor Swift fan. She's incredible. Swifty? Huge fan. Oh, love her. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what classic rock band had dossiers come out about them on Disney Plus? Fleetwood Mac, The Who, The Rolling Stones, or The Beatles? Disney Plus docu series. A docu series. Did I say dossier? I don't know what you said. Sorry. Docu series. What you meant? Um, Fleetwood Mac. Wasn't it the Beatles? It was the Beatles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. that took me a minute. Get Back covers the Beatles making their 1970 album Let It Be. It's actually fascinating. I haven't seen the whole thing, but it's very, very good. The footage in there is unbelievable. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't know the song Let It Be, but I watched a lot of Sesame Street, and they did their version, which was Letter B. The Letter B. Oh. Did you ever remember that? No, I didn't. Did you ever but see it's very that? cute. I it did see it. I just don't. Be, yeah. Letter. Yeah, it was very, very so sweet. So cute. Which classic TV show has not been rebooted as a new series? A. Friends. B. Full House. C. Will and Grace. D. Sex and the City. This is like a trick question, I guess. Um, slightly. Friends? Slightly a trick question. Friends? You are because, correct. Yeah, that was just a reunion. There you go. It was a reunion special that they aired, but it has not been remade okay. just yet. Hopefully it will. All right. I know. I love that series. Which Real Housewife was charged with wire fraud and money laundering? Oh, you know what? Okay, well, maybe Ramona I'll recognize. Ramona Singer, Lisa Renna, Jen Shaw, or Erica Girardi? I know you it know wasn't Lisa Renna. Renna. Was it uh, Erica? Was it Erica? Was it D? No, you're thinking of her husband. So her husband Jen Shaw. had legal trouble, but the real housewife of Salt Lake City, Jen Shaw, was charged with wire fraud. Oh, it was a Salt Lake City. You know what? I'm embarrassed to say that as a native Salt Lake Cityan, I have still not watched that series. I need to. I need to give it a go. It's a train wreck. You should definitely watch it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, you, can't you can't let wait. it go. That was fun. It was fun. I guess we kind of know. Yeah. Yeah. Dossier, Do docu-series, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> That's a good one. If you want to test your 2021 pop culture knowledge, you can find this quiz along with many others on clicktohouston.com. That was fun. It was fun. Still to come, why TSA is saying alarm clocks and iPhones could be getting you held up in the security lines. The list of items you won't believe people are taken to the airport. Yeah, this list is pretty uh, jaw-dropping. But why don't we check in with Lauren Kelly, who is hanging out downtown ahead of some big rodeo news today. Hey, Lauren. That's right, you guys. Can you tell by the smile on my face and the stars on my sweater, we are ready for Rodeo Houston's big 2022 star entertainment lineup. The guy that puts that together, we're going to talk to him in just a few minutes when Houston Life returns. They're setting it up, y'all. Okay, so a lot of our viewers, I know you've been traveling for the holiday, and it's always an experience going to the airport, right? Uh, yes, and I always seem to get behind the people that didn't get the memo about not bring, you know, empty the pockets. Or, But I will say every airport is different, right? Leave your iPad in, take it out, take your, I mean, there's all kinds of things, right? Yes, and the worst too is when the person at the front of the line is just like, 
looking at TikTok and the agent's like, next. Let's go. Next. Let's Let, go. A thousand people waiting. So here's the thing. So TSA compiled a list of some of the strangest things folks try to bring through airport security. They're like no big deal. Like no big deal. And this was posted on the TSA's <laughs> Instagram account. You can always check uh, their website and their what can I bring page if you're wondering. Check this out. Stun gun disguised as an iPhone. Oh yeah, oh, okay. not a big deal. Throwing stars, which are weapons, mm -hmm. right? Very sharp, sharp edge oh, weapons. The next one. Smoke grenades. I mean, bow and arrow. I don't get it. I'm a just me and harpoon. my arrow. A oh, massive harpoon. I, I promise. I'm just taking this massive harpoon to, to my grandma. It's hers, and she. It's a piece it. of art. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's kind of alarming. And um, yeah, and and you know that if you try to take a gun through airport security, even if it's unloaded, you try to take it through security, that is a federal crime. Yes. So yeah, just pay close attention, folks. You wonder too. I mean, were some of these accidental? One was bullets in a gum container. Oh my goodness. Listen, follow the Instagram account because it is quite funny. I mean, they do have some good, really good posts on there, but the things that, that they find on a daily basis. Funny, I think it's scary. It's scary, but it's sort of mind boggling. It's like, funny wasn't believe? the right word. It was sort of that moment of what? Like yeah. the jaw dropping moment. For sure. All right, let's bring in Joe Sam with our question of the day. Hi, Joe. Hey guys, yeah, you have to think like, I'm gonna pack this today. I don't right. know what people are thinking, putting that in their suitcases, but you know, we wanna hear from you guys. What's the most unusual thing that you've seen on a plane or at the airport? We got those strange answers right here coming in. Joanne, she writes, I saw a man carrying a roaster with an entire cooked turkey onto the oh. plane. Oh. I would be sitting by him. Wow. <laughs> that would be a good meal on the plane. I wanna smell that on the plane though. <laughs> right, of course we have Robin Gum writes in, she put, I walked to the back of the plane and sat in the last seat. I took the aisle seat. In the middle seat was a man and a young man at the window. I sat down and the middle man tapped me and said, I hope you don't mind. I'm transporting a prisoner. Oh. <laughs> One Surprise. Way to get somebody to move. <laughs> right. You're all kind of prisoners on a plane, right? I would be out of there quick. The last one we have in Ruby, she writes in an ice chest <gasps> labeled eyes. I still have so many questions, and it was over 25 years ago. Wow. <laughs> Some weird plant. stuff, right? Yeah. Of course, you guys want you to head over to the Houston Life Facebook page, join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show. Now, I already went on there and looked at some of the other comments. People have seen some very strange things right? on the plane. I, I don't know what's happening in 2022 or, or 2021. Remember the woman who tried to take the peacock on the plane as her service yeah. animal? <laughs> right. I mean, there's something for everyone. Hey, listen, oh. uh, it's Joe Sam's birthday. Happy hey. birthday. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I'm 25 years young, is what I'm telling people. I don't reveal my real age neither. It's just, you know, the young beauty in me. Well, okay, <laughs> but you're saying 25 is not your real age? No, it's not. Usually I count back a year, so I started. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Happy I count birthday. down a year. What are your plans today? I am going to be doing what everybody usually loves to do take a nap okay yeah, and that's going to be a my plan nap yeah. With ghost. yeah with ghost look at ghost now he's going to be keeping me up all day if i try and take a nap yeah and that was from last year when i celebrated back in downtown when i lived downtown Aww. houston really really enjoyed my time there because you can just hop out to your apartment and yeah. go straight to the bar yeah yeah <laughs> that's true that's true well we hope you have a fantastic birthday joe absolutely thank you guys i appreciate it absolutely did you like the digital confetti that came down i loved it i saw it crawling all over my head and i'm glad because we don't have to clean up. I know. No clean up. No mess. <laughs> Everybody needs a dip. Oh, there it goes. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Grab the broom. We'll be sweeping it up all day. Oh, we hope so you cool. celebrate in style, but we'll see you a little bit later for your story. Can't Absolutely. wait for that. Joe, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the big announcement two years in the making after cutting Rodeo Houston short, of course, due to the pandemic in 2020 and canceling the whole thing entirely last year. The Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, they are going to announce their full list of performers tonight. Two years in the make it. I, I know. Can you believe that day it was canceled? Yeah. I will never forget that day. Wow. Well, this announcement for the star studded lineup is set for 7 p.m. Lauren Kelly is live at the Rustic downtown this afternoon ahead of the big news tonight. Hey, Lauren. So how's the setup going? You guys, the thrill is in the air. The excitement is here. And in just a few short hours at 7 o'clock, like you said, this big, huge announcement is finally going to be open. We're going to find out who is playing the 2022 Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And we already know that King George is playing. We already know that our hometown favorites, Bun B, Parker McCollum, and of course, Cody Johnson, they have been announced. But you know what? There's a lot of shows left that we are going to fill those holes. And the guy in charge of making 
making that happen, locking down those names. This is Jason Kane. You have probably the coolest job in the city. Well, it's <laughs> I, I have to tell you, it's it's a thrill to be here tonight, ready for our 90th year. 90th year, long time coming since we had to cut our last show short. So we are really happy with tonight and the ability to say we're back in 2022. And just saying that, like you said, Jason, we are back. That is just in itself awesome. Why don't you tell uh, our viewers a little bit about like how the city feels? Like everybody's very excited for this announcement. I have to tell you, I've never been in a place like Houston that has taken absolute ownership ownership of this event. It is absolutely incredible from the media all the way down to every volunteer that comes out every year to help us. It's an amazing ownership on the part of the community. Absolutely. Now we have to remind you guys we are at the Rustic. This is going to be a private event tonight for a lot of our media friends and for the big announcement to come. They're going to broadcast it from that stage right behind us and going in and planning something as big as the rodeo. How long does it take you to do that. I mean, it takes on a normal year, a year at least. In some cases, I'm working on things two and three years out because of schedules and timing. And uh, so it does take a, uh, a long time to put everything in place. Well, you've done a great job for the Thank past you. couple of years that you have been with the rodeo. And I know that since it's coming back this year for its 90th year, it's going to be bigger than ever. Bigger than ever. I mean, do you look at like your favorite artists and put them on the wish list? No, unfortunately, I try to listen to those artists in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I, There's I, a hint. Okay. Yeah. They, you can hear them on the radio. That's good. No, no, Jason, I'm, thank you so much. We'll welcome. talk a little bit more a little bit later on the show about how those schedules kind of come together. This is going to be so much fun, you guys. Don't forget 7 o'clock right there on that stage. But we've got lots more to cover behind the scenes ahead of tonight's big rodeo announcement. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys. All right, Lauren. Super cool. It's going to be a great party. And I'm so excited to see, like, Cody Johnson, Parker McCollum, two of the artists we already know. I mean, they are great guys. Yep. Of course, Parker's from Conroe. We had him on the show recently. So, Lauren, uh, keep us posted. We'll and see you in a Bun bit. B. And Bun B. Don't forget about Bun B, too. We'll oh, see yeah. you guys in a bit. Yeah. Thanks, Lauren. When we come back, how regular cervical health screenings are saving lives. We're going to share how women can protect themselves from cervical cancer. And later, how the Houston chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi is giving back to the community with a day of caring. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back to the show. January is Cervical Health Awareness Month, the perfect time to remind all women of the importance of continuing routine exams despite the ongoing pandemic. Here with more on how cervical cancer can be prevented with regular screenings and the HPV vaccine is Dr. Abigail Zermano, gynecological oncologist with UT Physicians. Welcome to you. Thanks so much for being here. Yes, thank you so much for having me. This is such an important conversation, and we should note, too, before we get into all the details, we talk about cervical cancer. The symptoms can be really kind of vague, right? We think of maybe irregular bleeding, some pain, but virtually women can be symptom-free when they're going through this. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of women with cervical cancer don't have any symptoms until they're at advanced stages. And so that's why cervical cancer screening is so important so that we diagnose cervical precancer that can be treated so it never becomes cancer. Uh, but then we could also diagnose a cervical cancer in its relatively early stages. And that's where those screenings come into play. So, of course, we're talking about a pap smear and getting those done uh, once a year. Let's talk about family history. Is there a connection there? If people, women say, well, I don't have a history here, sort of like other cancers and things like that, um, should they be worried about this? Uh, absolutely. Cervical cancer is not one of the cancers that we typically think of as running in families. In fact, over 99% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus or HPV. And um, so we also should note, too, the most common that you're seeing sort of the age range here is between 30 to 40. 
It is. It really affects our younger populations, uh, which is why it's so important for women who are relatively young and healthy to continue to see their OBGYN or their primary care doctor for these routine screening exams so that, again, cervical cancer can be prevented. Absolutely. It's all about prevention here. Let's talk about the screening. Of course, that is the pap test. And for most, that's about 21 years old is when a woman should begin that test. Correct. It's recommended to start at age 21, and it's usually done about every three to five years, but that depends a little bit on your own personal medical history, your history of screening, and which screening tests you have. And for most women, it continues until age 65, but can really only stop if you've had regular screening. About 20% of cervical cancer is diagnosed in women over age 65, but that's mostly in women who didn't have regular screening beforehand. Dr. Zamorano, you, you keep mentioning the screening, and I think this is a really great point to bring home, is that screening allows us to have sort of that baseline to see whether there's changes, and that's super important with something like cervical cancer where you could maybe have something going on but have no symptoms. Absolutely. Um, again, most women are asymptomatic. Um, and again, because most cervical cancer or cervical precancer is caused by the human papillomavirus, um, that doesn't have any symptoms. And in fact, most people clear it on their own, meaning they never even knew that they had it. It's that lingering infection that can be picked up by a pap smear or a pap test uh, that can help guide interventions to help prevent it ever becoming cancer. Great information there. Let's talk about that HPV vaccine. Who needs it and why? So it's recommended for both men and women, boys and girls, uh, from age 9 to 45. Um, and the benefit of getting the vaccine is especially seen before uh, someone is ever exposed to HPV uh, or the human papillomavirus, which is why it's so important in our pediatric populations. Um, but again, if, you've, uh, if you're not a pediatric patient and if you are into your, you know, even later years um, or, you know, up to age 45, you can still have some benefit from the HPV. HPV vaccine. And even if you've been exposed to HPV, you still need the vaccine, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the vaccine does prevent against nine high risk strains. And it's possible that even if you've been exposed, if you've had a positive HPV test at some point in your life, uh, you might still gain again some benefit from the vaccine from those other high risk strains. Dr. Abigail Zamorano, thank you so much for joining us today from UT Physicians. Great information and bottom line is get those screenings. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Happy New Year. For more information, visit utphysicians.com or call 888-4-UT-DOCS. That's 888-488-3627. We're going to switch gears now and toss it on over to Derek. Hey. Th thank you, Courtney. Yeah, it is Wine Club Wednesday, people. And coming up, the clean vegan wine in today's Wine Club Wednesday. We'll also be getting a check of what's coming up on the news at 4 o'clock, including how getting to and from school could be changed changing for your kids. Houston Life is back in just two minutes. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you here on this Wednesday at 3.30. Yeah, let's get more of your responses to our question of the day. Earlier we asked, what is the most unusual thing you have seen on a plane or at the airport? There's some good ones. Oh, dear. Okay, so Kelly writes in, <laughs> sat next to a penguin, oh, on a flight to Orlando. Oh, my gosh, that is so sweet. Yeah, I love that. Could you imagine, though? Excuse me. Hello, penguin. Greg. I love penguins. Greg's always a good one. Here yeah. we go. My cousin Hazen from National. Geographic's Primal Survival with Hazen Audell and I had to keep 100 butterflies alive on a flight from Ecuador to Houston by misting each one individually every hour while ensuring they didn't escape into the cabin. What? Hashtag mission accomplished. Yes, we all needed permits. The entire crew was fascinated. Fun memory. That is I love this story. And I, Greg, I love your life. I know. Greg has a very S interesting life. I want to Brits are butterflies. I do too. I do too. Michelle writes in, a woman, a woman brought her toddler with a pee cup and he would sit there and pee in it like it was a game. Well, that's brilliant. I'm really sorry about that, Michelle. <laughs> I didn't know what else to do to keep myself occupied. I know. Yeah. Gosh, you've been outed. I know, but that was a few years back, so yeah. I've grown up a bit since Good. Then. Let's check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up at the top of the hour, guys. Any strange airline stories? Butterflies, uh -huh. fellow constrictors. Uh -huh. Wedding cake. That's kind of... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who would
would wow. trust that. I mean, you had a little turbulence in there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, ruined the whole thing. And some cheerleaders from here won, like the Nationals, mm -hmm. and they had a trophy that must have been as tall as me, and they brought it on the plane with them. Yeah, they're big, they're big, those trophies. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that well, was just unusual. Did they take up a whole seat? seat? They had to buy a ticket for it? It took up the whole Strap upper, the, the bin up oh. there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for sure. <laughs> I remember years ago, I got on a plane. I was I had a head cold, and I fell asleep before we took off. And I woke up. We don't up. fly with head colds anymore. I know, not anymore. Like I, said, I said years ago. And then I, I woke <laughs> up at, it, with pre, all the pressure, and I stumbled, had to stumble to the, to the bathroom because I had uh, vertigo. <gasps> from falling asleep, yeah, oh. it, you know, yeah, I think, oh, yeah, so, so me walking to the, trying to make it to the restroom there was probably the strangest thing I've ever seen, because I was stumbling, and, but people were looking at me like I was crazy, and I was like, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean it, I'm there, like, look at that Listen, I always feel like it's super strange when people don't bring their own snacks. I'm like, what if we're stranded? How are you going to wow. survive? I have a bag of snacks. I really do feel like, I mean, listen, I'm a survivor. You got to have you snacks. You are a survivor. You got to have some water. I never bring my own snacks. Water and snacks? Really? I'm going to start. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You've never been stranded on, on a flight then. You know, the worst is being stranded on the tarmac for oh, an hour. Oh, that's goodness. what I mean if you get stranded on the tarmac. You had to bring that up. Yes. That's <laughs> happened before. You guys that clearly don't get hangry like I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Almost three hours in New Jersey once. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's that's so start, start bringing your snacks. Yeah. Right? Hey, Frankie, <laughs> we're flying today. It's pretty nice. You know I mean, what? The weather's beautiful, beautiful. Out there, guys. Look at this. It's gorgeous. It's warm. I'm talking, I wouldn't be surprised to see 80 degrees once it's all said and oh. done across the area. But things are changing. Here's a front that's on the way. That will get here in the overnight. But this evening's going to be nice and mild. Look at this. 79 at Hobby and Sugarland right now, 76 at Bush, 73 on the island. And this is an adorable little guy, Rosie, I should say, a little girl. 75 at 4, 73 at 5, 70 at 6. We're still 60s into this evening, but notice it's in the 40s and the 50s to the north. Dallas right now is at 61. So this front, along with the cool air, and it's dry air, but it's cool air, that's on the way for Thursday and Friday. So coming up at 4 o'clock, I'm going to time that front out for you. It is a dry one. Let's talk about how cold it's going to get, how long it's going to last, and then it warms up this weekend, but that comes with some umbrella weather. Let's talk about 4 o'clock. All right, sounds good. We'll talk to you then, Fran. Thank you. All right, so here's a look at some of the other stories we're covering for you at 4 o'clock today in our newscast coming up. A KPRC2 story about some of those pop-up COVID testing sites prompting calls now for a federal investigation. Our story revealed that some people were not receiving their test results, causing concerns about their personal information and the legitimacy of those sites. We'll take a closer look at who's calling for that federal investigation. We told you about this last night at 10 o'clock for Bend ISD, warning parents about busing delays today. We will check in to see how things are going and why today might not be the last time the district may have to deal with these significant delays. Plus, with the Omicron variant of COVID spreading quickly, how do you know if the symptoms your child has are in fact COVID? Could it just be allergies, perhaps just a cold? Health reporter Haley Hernandez clears up some of the confusion about when the kids should be staying home from school. So a lot to cover at four o'clock today. And Cordy, I have to say, Based on your conversation earlier, I love the short hair on you. You can oh, rock it all. Thank you, girl. I appreciate Seriously. that. Thank You're versatile. you. Versatile. I love versatile. the throwback. And Thank happy birthday to Joe Sam, too. I know. Aww. He's here. He yes. can hear you. He's happy birthday, you Joe. <laughs> happy birthday, frat. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you at the top of the hour. Hey. Okay. I still think you might go back to the pixie cut one day. I just have a feeling. One you, day. You would look good in any haircut. One day. Any haircut. Thank okay, you. Okay, so of course it is happy hour in Studio B. Our We're first gonna, one our of the year. Our first Wine Club Wednesday of 2022. Of course, it's poured by our friends over at HEB. Today, we are focusing on guilt-free wines for your resolutions and recovery after the holidays. Yes, everybody wants to eat clean, right? We should drink clean as well. We're highlighting the unexpected Shiraz. I love the name and the bottle of this. It's so sleek. Unexpected Shiraz is made and bottled without the use of sulfite. So this is great if you have any kind of allergy or trying to eliminate that and other preservatives. It's perfect for anyone, of course, with that sulfite sensitivity. Maybe your face gets red, your nose runs, and those are weary that are at maybe weary of those extra additives in your diet. Yeah. This wine does not have it. It's also vegan friendly and organically grown. Well, and so Ray, our, our, our floor director here, was asking, like, isn't all wine vegan because it's made with grapes? Mm -mm. A lot of people don't realize that animal products are used to help filter the wine. There are all kinds of strange additives you wouldn't expect to find in a lot of wines. So that's what it means when it's, you know, naturally filtered, then it's a vegan wine without all those additives. Did you know, too, that Shiraz 
is actually Australia's version of the Syrah grape. Yes. That's where the name comes from. I am a huge fan of this particular variety of wine. I love red, but this is not going to overpower anything. It has this beautiful deep purple color with rich and robust flavors. It's perfect for like a heavy meal, maybe like a beef stew or lamb. It's also great with just like a cheese board or how about some cheesecake or red velvet? Oh, this would yes. be fantastic. It would be with really. That. So here's the best part. It's thirteen dollars. Thirteen bucks, and I got to tell you, this drinks like a thirty-dollar bottle of wine. Yeah, it's it's really delicious. There's a little QR code. You can see it down here, right here. You're right. I can never be a weather person either. It's right there on your screen. So uh, just open your smartphone like you're about to take a picture. Yeah. A little link will pop up. Click on it and join our Houston Life Wine Club. It's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. This is lovely. You will not be disappointed. And by the way, guys, you can join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by H E B. If you are not a member yet, visit our website to register. It's very easy. You're going to have exclusive access uh, to giveaways, and you'll even have a chance to do some virtual tastings with us. I know. It is really so much fun. As a reminder, you can find today's featured wines at your local HEB. That's right. Go see our friends over at HEB. Cheers to that. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Dear. First Wine Club Wednesday. Love it. Let's check in with the birthday boy, Joe Sam, for a special community event. Hi, Joe. Hey, guys. Yeah, that's right. You guys just finished talking about HEV. Well, they're also in cooperation with this event that we're talking about. Today is my fraternity's Founders Day, and I'll tell you how the Houston chapter of Cap Alpha Psi is celebrating with the Day of Caring. They're giving back to so many people in the community. That's coming up after a quick break. Stay with us. Back to Houston Life, the historic Black Greek fraternity Cap Alpha Psi celebrates his 111 years of service today with each individual chapter participating in events around their city. The Houston Alumni Chapter hosted a day of caring to show their love for the community while training its future leaders. It's a beautiful and blessed thing. This is our 23rd year of doing this. It's an joyful thing that we could do that we could give back. It's always good when black organizations can come together and do one good thing for the community. Dozens of cars packing the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church to receive groceries and other necessities, an event the community looks forward to every year. This feels like something that in the many years that we've done it is probably, this is probably my best feeling seeing how many organizations have connected to it since we started. One organization in particular is Kappa League, a youth branch of Kappa Alpha Psi that instills kindness, care, and love in young black men while teaching them valuable life lessons. We, we have probably about 50 Kappa Leaguers out here who are high school students between 9th and 12th grade, and we're teaching them that they must give back, that part of their, you know, their, their work here uh, in this community is to give back and help others. Uh, I joined this because I wanted to build more leadership skills, and I also wanted to get around more people that I'm not familiar with, and I also uh, wanted to see what I wanted to do in life. It gives me a good feeling knowing that I'm giving back to the community. Uh, it's also instilling uh, for the future, so hopefully I could throw an event like this and give back as well. But according to the community event chair, the program goes beyond just giving back. This also shows love. And if you're doing something, you're showing love. So if you're just doing it yourself, that means you're showing them at the same time, and so they be able to get the love and understand the love. That message of love that is passed down from leaders to future leaders, giving purpose to their annual day of caring. It shows them that leadership not only comes from being somebody, but it comes from helping somebody. This is a legacy that has continued, and now that it started at OST, has moved to a new location and changed, the legacy itself can continue to grow and get bigger and bigger in every year. Yeah, 111 years and more years to follow from that. The Houston chapter of Cap Alpha Psi has a full roster of community service events they'll be partaking in today. Rather, for more information, just head over to our website, HoustonLife.tv, to see how you can celebrate with the noobs. So this is something that we do every single year on January 5th, and we have a whole lot of noobs here at the building. We have Cam Boyle, yeah. Keith, and Devin, and myself. So we have a huge group that just goes out in the community, and just we do a lot of work. So we represent our colors, crimson and cream, and we just have a good time. 
Super, super cool to see such a great group giving back. I love the jacket, yeah. Joe, by the way. but Nine you, years old. I mean, you can see it, the no, peeling. No, you can't. It's, no, it's great. It's well loved. But regardless of where you are in the United States, though, you mentioned that there are chapters all over the place, right? It's a national organization. So there's chapters all over. And it's not just a black organization. So there's members of all different ethnicities right. that are in this fraternity. I mean, it is incredible to see all the people that are participating. I also love the stretch out to the younger community, mm -hmm. to the generation there. To, to understand what it's like to lead one day, and I think that's fantastic that you're reaching the younger men in the in the group as well. Great male mentorship. Super well, great cool story. Show. Happy Absolutely. birthday again. Thank you. Happy birthday. I'm excited. Ready Can't wait to, to hear about your party tonight. <laughs> or the bed. You we'll gotta see. go. You gotta go. You can sleep tomorrow. Courtney's trying to convince Joe to go out, and all he wants to do is sleep. This man yeah. works so hard. So yeah. do we'll what you see. want, Joe. It's your birthday. I'll think about it, Courtney. I'll see. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Joe. Happy birthday. Thank Enjoy you. that early bedtime tonight. You know what I mean. All right, let's send things back out to Lauren Kelly, who is waiting for a big announcement from Rodeo today. Hey, Lauren. That's right, you guys. Joe Sam's not the only one having a party tonight. The Rodeo is. They're making their big, huge star entertainment lineup announcement at 7 o'clock, and we are here behind the scenes getting a little bit more details on how that's all going to go down. Don't go anywhere. Please line us back in just a few minutes. you are not from Houston. Tonight, you're going to get one of the biggest announcements in the new year and in the city for the entire year. Okay, Rodeo Houston time of the year is the biggest and best time about being in Houston. And we're getting the full star studded 2022 entertainment lineup announced tonight right here from the rustic. It's going to be a private event, but it's going to be streamed all over. And here to talk more about it is really the guy who puts the list together. Jason Kane, I want to read everybody Buddy, your title because you've been doing this for quite some time. Director of Entertainment and Concert Production since 2006. Tell us you, how you even start about going about getting these artists. Well, we do a lot of research actually among the folks that volunteer with us and the general public. And of course, you know, we're conscious of what people in Houston expect from the rodeo because. You know, they've got such ownership, the community has such ownership of the event that you always have to take into account what, you know, what people expect. You guys have hit the nail on the head for so many years in the past, and you do such a great job with Houston artists as well. So, so far we know Parker McCollum, Bun B, uh, Cody uh, Johnson's coming, and of course King George. You really have gone to the top of the list. We've seen artists like Garth Brooks in the past. We've had Blake Shelton, Jason Aldean. I mean, you've run the gauntlet. So, for you you guys to come back two years later strong are you just thrilled for this announcement tonight absolutely thrilled because it's our 90th anniversary and uh, our organization has never faced a challenge like we did with covid and so to come back after that with all of our volunteers and with the entire community behind us is absolutely phenomenal well jason we couldn't be more excited for you have so much fun tonight we will be watching and i just want to mention to our viewers that clip to houston.com is going to stream this at seven o'clock so if you want to hop online and stream it there as well rodeohouston.com and again in our 10 o'clock newscast you can catch that lineup if you missed it rodeo houston the lineup happening tonight at seven o'clock just a few hours away i'm excited jason's excited Very and i excited. know that all of houston's excited sending it back to you guys in studio b now it's it, going to be great. I know. I'm super excited, too. We're excited to get the, this, the rodeo season underway. Lauren, thanks so much. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a big local name coming to the rodeo. Perfect timing for that. And as we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight, including big news from a Kardashian ex. Hey, Nichelle. Derek and Courtney tune into ET tonight for Ye's big date night. Who's his new woman? Plus, our Sophia Bush exclusive telling us all about her primetime return. That's tonight at 6:30, right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back.
Tomorrow on Houston Life, we're going inside the Infinite, a brand new immersive installation inspired by NASA. It's making its U.S. premiere in Houston over in the Heights area at Sawyer Yards. We cannot wait to go so do that. It's going to be so, so cool. Also, as you know by now, the 2022 Rodeo Houston Entertainment lineup, the announcement is just hours away. One epic performance we can expect is from Bun B and some of Houston's most well-known rappers on Black Heritage Day. Bun B will be joining us tomorrow to share what we can expect during this H-Town takeover. And you know what? It's been a minute since we've hung out with Bun B. It'll be good to have him back. It will be great to have him in studio as well. And I will say Black Heritage Day at the rodeo is typically breaks records every year. Yeah. And I guarantee it's going to break another one. They're going to bring a massive, massive crowd. It's going to be so good. It'll be great to catch up with him. Before we go, let's check more of your responses from our Facebook question of the day. We asked, what's the most unusual thing you seen on the plane or at the airport. Let's check in with Brooke. She's a flight attendant, yeah. right? She's got the stories. A woman holding a retainer in one hand, a dry toothbrush in the other, <laughs> vigorously scrubbing it while sitting in the front row of the airplane. I could see particles flying off her mouthpiece onto the seat, floor, window, and bulkhead. Ah, uh, yes, the life of a flight attendant. <laughs> Brooke, wow. Right flight above. attendants <laughs> always have the best stories, don't they? Joanne writes in, once a pilot flew all around the Statue of Liberty for us. That was fun because we saw the statue. Oh. Up close. Well, that's lovely. Oh, you know what always surprises me when I get on a plane and someone lowers the window shade? It's like you're getting a free, like, beautiful from tour from the skies, right? Lovely. I always stare out the window. I love it. Happy Wednesday. Cheers Happy to Wednesday. you. Let's. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, let's hand it on over to Keith and Christine standing by in Studio A. Hey there.